are such an asshole. I'd like to remain anonymous video format. I always like to say Jerry writes, but it's not his name isn't Jerry. But no, you guys are denying me that. Anonymous writes. Hi Aaron, first of all, huge thank you for all you do. I bought Red Applied Knowledge from several of your books and it's been tremendously helpful. It damn well is. Those are damn good books. You could spend the 120 bucks to buy all my books. I guarantee you're gonna save $100,000 in the long run over your life and a decade, at least a decade. No, why would we do that? That being said, I find myself in a position where I have a good job in computer sciences and crawling out of stupid old debts. One of them is profitable though. I bought a condo to live in, but then move out of state for work, so I rented the condo out, makes a small profit, not to mention equity, and it has gained. Your disdain for the boomers is always something that makes me smile, as I got the same disdain very quickly once I was out on my town, <clears throat> which has been since my 18th birthday in my senior year of high school. Blah, blah, blah. All this being said, I started trying to come up with future investments where I came across the data that over the 50 crowd has the vast majority of the country's wealth and spending power. This makes sense since one should accumulate wealth through time, but with the decline, this isn't as likely for Gen X, Millennials, and Gen Z. Well, here's, I mean, Gen Z will inevitably take on the majority of wealth, either through inheritance or earning it. The baby boomers laughably have no, um, well, I know they have wealth, but they also have debts, and they have very little in, in way of um, retirement. So they're going to have to liquidate their assets to uh, retire adequately or just work till they're dead. And keep in mind, they're, they're the original debt addicts. Um, so I, I think a lot of it will just then go to the banks, which you could then argue that Gen Z would be the majority shareholders of these banks. So in one way, directly or indirectly or another, it would be you know, the, the next generation. And then the millennials will inherit uh, the wealth, but who knows by that time, all of our wealth will have deteriorated or been squandered. Because you all want to be teachers and guidance counselors and social workers. And nothing will actually be produced. My idea is that my investments should target the boomers, both because they have more money and assets, because it would be nice to profit from the telecommute hating, job outsourcing, entitlement program, voting vampires instead of the other way around. Here's the problem. You're not the only one to think of this. Uh, a lot of smart money out on Wall Street, of which I know it's hard to imagine there is some, but there is some. People are way ahead of you on this. Um, <clears throat> billions of dollars, trillions maybe even ha uh, perhaps, have been invested. People have bought up health care, pharmaceuticals, um, REITs, real estate investment trusts that focus on retirement or assisted or even nursing home living, um, the health care industry. So money has already entered these fields. I'm not saying it's wrong or a bad idea. I mean, your logic, it's not sound. You're right. But... Many years ago, people realized the statistical, the, the baby boom. It's this huge generational uh, piece of feces going through the digestional tract of the United States of America. Now, right, they're in the colon now, and they're about to get shat out. Uh, so people have been investing in the colon of the United States, if you were to put it ever so grossly. <clears throat> um, one idea is to buy 55-plus old homes, uh, not 55 homes, 55 year old senior housing and rent them out or make an app or game that targets that demographic but that is just a couple of ideas. So I'd like to call upon your life experiences and economic expertise to ask how can we stick it to the boomers and profit from them? The answer doesn't have to be specific to my situation. A general set of approaches anyone can follow is fine. Thanks and I'll keep you anonymous. All right, there's the traditional old way uh, that I mentioned before, where you invest in, heck, I bet you there's even a, a mutual fund out there that invests in like senior type of stuff, you know, a, a little bit of pharmaceuticals, a little bit of assisted living, a little bit of healthcare. I bet you there's a mutual fund out there. So the point is you go and you invest in publicly traded stocks or mutual funds <clears throat> that tailor towards the elder society. Okay, so that's one way to invest in the boomers. Um, oh, wait, let me. Taking care of debt problems. Oh, yeah, and then I asked him, I said, well, wait, are you going to invest? I mean, you, you're an individual. You can invest directly into senior living, but do you have enough capital? And you said, no, I'm taking my care of my debt. I realize investments are what I should do. 
with some of my money went to da 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 ba. By the way, if you're ever in LA, you know that. Um, <clears throat> so you could buy a condo in a senior living complex and lease it out to a baby boomer if that condo allows you to lease it out, but that's a lot of headache and frustration to invest directly. You know, like, I'm going to start a restaurant that serves old-time coffee, and we, we have Jimi Hendrix posters up, and we, we sing, come on, baby. Like, oh, my God, could you imagine that? Could you imagine? I just had a horrible vision. Um, like, when I go visit uh, the World War II generation relatives in the nursing homes, they would sing songs. You know, this is when they were losing it. Um, and it'd be like Benny Goodman or Duke Ellington. You know, oh, you take the A train. That's the way you gotta get to Harlem. Can you imagine when the baby boomers, just bear with me, I know this is a tangent. Could you imagine they're gonna have sing-alongs? They're gonna be singing, Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> Don't you want somebody to love? Don't you need somebody to love? They'll be begging to die on the toilet like Janis Joplin and Jim Morrison. Anyway, so there's the direct route. Investing through the financial markets. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, whatever. Um, then there's... You want to... It sounds more vengeful. You, don't, you want to capitalize and opportunize off of the baby boomers. It sounds like you want to cause them a little bit of pain. Uh... So if you wanted to do that, here's what I'd recommend. And, and this would take a little bit of cleverness, a little bit of entrepreneurship. But uh, as you know, I'm going through, well, I haven't gone, I'm not going through, I have gone through my epiphany that this world, especially Western civilization, does not deserve the truth, does not deserve success, does not deserve reality. It deserves lies. And the... Uh, peddlers of lies, the brokers of lies, make a lot of money selling sweet lies. Two perfect examples, always use them. Oprah sold decades of lies to women, just telling them what they wanted to hear. And the Democrat Party lied to practically everyone, but in particular women and minorities. And look how great they're doing. This is what happens when you believe in lies and you live a lie, is it's not in the real world, it's not based in the real world. And then you don't have success. Another perfect example, worthless degrees. Follow your heart and the money will follow, said no libertarian or Republican ever. Or at least a good one. But that's strictly the domain of, of Democrats. And then all these millennials and a lot of Gen Xers went, follow my heart. And they financially ruined. Worthless degrees, worthless educations. Well, who made money off that? Well, guidance counselors, professors, college administrators made a ton of money off of that. Why not be them? And when you go in, you try and say, hey, you need to save money for retirement. Don't you tell me what to do? <laughs> hey, you shouldn't major in English. Hey, you did the race to sick this time of a bit. You know what? I am gonna I am gonna lie to you now, and I am gonna profit. So using that philosophy, what do the baby boomers want to be lied to about? <clears throat> I've come up with a handful of things. And they're kind of universal about human nature. This isn't specific to the baby boomers, but that it's going to be tuned up to about 11 or 12 because they're on the verge of death. They want to pack it in. Um, if you look, a perfect example, one of these handful of universal things would be sex and love. <clears throat> 50 is the new 25. Remember that 10 years ago? Well, yeah, now they're 60. 60 is the new 30. Uh, youth. They want to think they're going to live forever. And... Uh, what would be a perfect epitome of this would be, I think it's called Our Time. It's this dating site for baby boomers. It's hilarious. It's just hilarious. And now, because once you get to that age, men die off quicker than women because we want to. Uh, that there's all these women now, so it's totally tailored towards women. And these women were the first ones who couldn't, couldn't rush fast enough to make divorce an Olympic event. They couldn't drive that divorce rate high enough and fuck over the kids and fuck over their families, fuck over their husbands and all that. Admittedly, some husbands were dicks, I'm not talking, but but now they want to fall in love again. It's not too late to fall. It's universal. Women want to fall in love. They want to have a dad. So do guys, right? So if you set up like a dating site, or on the guy's side, a prostitution thing, or something like that, something that tailors to the desire to fall in love, have sex, these basic human urges um, for older people. 
that'd be one way to do it. Okay. You can even say another example. You could write, a, for example, write a Harlequin romance novel targeted towards baby boomer women and how they fell in love. Another perfect, perfect real world example. And I cheer these guys on. Um, you hear overseas in the United Kingdom, all these old hags go down to Northern Africa because that's smart. And they, they find true love. And there's, you know... Ahmed or or Kanbar or whoever he's this Tunisian he's this Moroccan and he's 27 or 28 and these gals with their MBAs and their advanced degrees and they're so smart woman don't need no man fish bicycle couldn't get a guy back in the UK oh they find they actually think they find true love through um, Ahmed and Ahmed is oh it is very poor here. I mean look fish bicycle oh no not fish bicycle. He pray love like oh she found this Brazilian guy oh really what and he fell and he was all smooth and everything really they tell you what you want to hear, and then these girls get scammed oh I need money for my mother, so that I even though I sound like, not Carlos Esteban who was it, who was it in Grand Theft Auto I, Antonio Lopez no who was the guy on the. <laughs> Uh, you guys know who I'm talking about if you played Grand Theft Auto. I, Ricardo Lopez. <laughs> Even though that's Spanish or Hispanic. But these guys, they tell the women what, and they scam them out of their money. Tens of thousands of dollars, their retirement. They want to believe, oh, they were all proud, and we don't need no man back in the 70s and the 80s. Oh, they hated Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> oh, but then they come back because they want a true love. I mean, so what you could do as a young man, you could, I mean, it would suck. You got a lot of wrinkly vagina to deal with and pruny boobs, but if you're willing to, to suffer, you could bring in a lot of money offering not actual companionship and sex, but the, the potential, the potential. <clears throat> so that's one thing. Uh, men would be the same thing, I guess, with, with prostitution and all that. Um, another thing would be books. I mean, kind of use Oprah as an example. You could have a, now, that was back in the 80s, so it was cable television. Now you could do a website. Um, you could do a YouTube channel where you, uh, you talk about baby boomer old fart people stuff and how you, you, um, you tell them just what they want to hear. Lifestyle type of stuff. You know you're still young and you can do it. Don't let a, a hip replacement slow you down. Da, 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 da. So some kind of social media where they tune in, you capitalize it. It wouldn't necessarily, you'd just be telling them lies. You wouldn't be selling, oh, but you could monetize. You could sell stuff on your website. So there is that. Um, There was another one. What was, uh, dang it, what was it? There was sex, just feeling good. Um. Darn it, hang on. Let me, let me pause this and I'll, I'll come up with it again. I remembered retirement planning. I don't know what it's like over in the UK or across the West, the rest, Western world, but in the United States, I'd have to look at my book called Poor Rich's Retirement. I wrote the book because baby boomers just don't have enough saved up for retirement. So you could sell them financial products. Now, if you went, you know, um, Alex Trebek, he's always online selling health insurance. Uh... I don't know how it financially works out that you could sell health insurance to these baby boomers, but I guarantee you mathematically some much smarter actuaries realize, we'll tell them this price, but we're going to charge it. So you sell them life insurance, health insurance, um, annuities. Um, the big one, I, would, I think it's a perfect poetic justice, is the reverse mortgage. That type of stuff where, hey... Did you yell at your children and tell them they had to save their money, but you didn't do it yourself because you're a dumb fuck baby boomer? Well, you could take the equity out of your your home mortgage because you didn't save up enough. You didn't understand compound interest. Like, there is a crisis of baby boomers that are going to have to keep working until they're dead practically. But if you could sell them the sweet lie, hey, you don't have to work anymore. Again, the lie, laziness. Sex, love, feeling good, and laziness. If you get a reverse mortgage... I mean, and what's funny about the baby boomers is they're in their 60s and 70s now. These reverse mortgages are going to carry them into their 80s, and they're going to be shit out of luck. Because when you're in the 80s, unless you're in great shape, you ain't working. You can't. 
Who cares though? It's like, <laughs> so that's that's what I would be, you know, nursing home insurance. This is the stuff that, you know, they they're desperate and they're going to be looking for a way out. And if you sell them salvation in the form, hey, for some small premiums of $100 a month or here's some money, you just give us that nasty house you have over on Rodeo Drive, we'll take it. That's something that you can do. Um and then I saw this in Japan. It's a little bit obscure, but I think it's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the baby boomers' kids didn't have kids. A lot of the baby boomers are without grandparents or grandchildren. Uh, and in Japan, this was back in the 80s and 90s when Japan was going crazy and you would work yourself to death. Was it Siriko, Sirikoru or something like that? Um, and there were people, <clears throat> not the Japanese parents' children, complete strangers that would come over. These are adult, you know, old Japanese people. And their children would be working, they'd never see them. And there was a company that would send very nice, polite couples to have dinner and be like the surrogate children. I think there's something to be capitalized off of that. I don't know how you would do it, but again, they want to see little grandchildren. They want to. They wanted to have family. Oh, fuck the family back in the 70s and 80s when divorce was just... <laughs> Oh my God, divorce, divorce, divorce. Now they want to have family. Oh, now, now, remember how they made fun? You maybe are too young to remember, but all the baby boomers in my generation made fun of June and War Cleaver. Well, now that Grim Reaper is waving hi to them and they're getting really close, now all of a sudden they want that nuclear family. Now they want to have sit-down dinners. Now they want, to have, they want grandchildren. If you could take little kids and give them the surrogate bullshit, you know, Thanksgiving experience or Christmas experience, um, you, you can make you can make some good money, good money, and they're on their way out. They got all the money in the world. They're gonna, you know, some of them do it. You know, or they'll borrow it. They'll take their home equity, not home equity. They'll take the reverse mortgage that you sold them, and they'll take that money and give it right back to you when you have the surrogate grandchildren Thanksgiving experience extravaganza. Have <laughs> these great, really smart, well-trained kids. <laughs> but basically. You know, it, it's going to take some work on your end. You'd have to write a book. You have to do a blog, some kind of micro entrepreneurial endeavor. But basically, you just solemnize, tell them they're beautiful. They're going to live forever. There's no cost or consequences. You know, just just basic human evil. And you charge them for it. You charge them for the good field. Maybe become a, a sales rep. Like, you know, maybe that's something I should. Well, no, my website is so anti boomer. But if you came up with a nice boomer website, what the hell is that? Why is the microwave going off? Um, and you got like an affiliate program? Like, hey, you can you can go to the Alex Trebek website where you can buy a reverse mortgage. Oh, and then you make commission off of that. That's something you could probably do. But sounds like you're busy. Sounds like you got a real career going on. Easiest way to do it. You're not going to take advantage of the boomers. You're going to actually help them with goods and services provided by the geriatric industry. But if you want to stick it to them, that's how you do it. That's how you stick it to anybody. You sell them lies, man. You sell them lies. And they'll believe it because, oh, he's such a nice man. He told me what he wanted to hear. All right, that's it. You guys got questions? Cappy's got answers. Hassleconsulting.com. We'll see you all later. Toodles.